Hey everyone, welcome to a new video, welcome to my channel. My name is Maika, welcome to Floating in Dreams. This is my hobby YouTube channel and I like to chat about all things fashion and makeup on this channel. A little bit more makeup than I do fashion, I have to be very honest. And every month I like to come on here and do a full face of a particular makeup brand. And today we're talking Fenty Beauty. And Fenty Beauty is Rihanna's makeup brand. I'm not sure how involved she actually is with the brand, it seems to be promoted as something that she's very involved with, but I don't think we actually have a really good grasp of how much she actually has to say about this line, at least I'm not entirely sure. I do know that it's owned by Kendo, I believe, which is the brand that also runs Sephora stores, which is why Fenty first launched in US Sephora. And in Europe, if you are where I live in the, the European Union, there are a couple of ways you can buy Fenty. It is available online, um, uh, especially uh, I think Cult Beauty stocks them. And in the UK, you can also buy it from Harvey Nichols. Um, and if you are in Europe, you also have the option to shop through French Sephora. The French Sephora website is a little bit of a nightmare to navigate if you don't speak French. Um, because they don't have an English option, but that's how I have bought most of these things is through the French Sephora website. So Sephora is the way to go. Uh, I think they also stock the brand in Germany, etc. But they don't ship to my countries. And today I have a full face makeup look for you. I say full face, uh, but as I have found as I've been doing a lot of these different videos is that I don't always find all the products in a line, all that interesting for my makeup tastes. So there are two products here today that I don't have. <laughs> well, three. Three products here that I don't have, and that's brows, setting spray, and also eyeshadow primer. Those I don't have from Fenty, but I do have everything else here. So I hope you would like to uh, stay tuned for that, and I hope you enjoy the video. Let's just get to this makeup look. So as I'm sitting down and I'm first doing uh, my eyeshadow primer, because that's not a Fenty product, uh, I can just chat to you a little bit about where I was on Sunday. In case you are a regular viewer of mine, then you know that I usually have a video up on Sundays. And unfortunately, I had a rather busy week <laughs> last week, so I just didn't get around to it. And I was like, well, I'll just be back with a new video on Tuesday. I'm sure they don't mind. And that's also why I'm filming this like at the end of a work day again. <laughs> Like I just got home from work and I was wearing a little bit of makeup before. So if it looks like I'm wearing mascara, I am. Because I took off everything, um, save for like most of the mascara I had on. But I now see that some of the shimmer from the eyeshadow that I was wearing before is still <laughs> sort of around my eyes. So do apologize if you find that annoying. But yeah, it's just uh, work got a little crazy this past week. So I was like, you know what? I really need to enjoy my weekend. And that's why there was no video on Sunday, but we're back. It's Tuesday. I've got a new video for you. And I'm going to start off the full face of Fenty with the Soft Focus, I believe it's called, Soft Silk Pro Filter Hydrating Primer. So Fenty is a brand that I was initially not that interested in, mainly because a lot of their base products that they started the launch, like they started the brand with a lot of foundations and like tons of different shades, which is why the brand got a lot of hype. And in my case, if you know anything about me, I've got pretty dry skin. And for me, mattifying products just don't work. So I like that the brand has expanded the range and really introduced some more hydrating products in their lineup because that's what I personally need. Uh, so for a while, I really like everybody was hyping up the brand and I was like, well, I could buy these products, but I know they won't work for my skin type. Uh, and as we get to some of the base products as well, you'll find that even for my dry skin, I feel it's not always as hydrating as I'd want them to be. And if they are very hydrating, I don't find them long lasting enough. So for me, the brand can definitely do a little bit more work on terms of like formulations when it comes to their hydrating products. But overall, I do really like these. So this soft silk primer, however, I just got for the purpose of the video. I really only use it one time. So I can't really say anything about my feelings about this. We're just gonna slap it on. And I'm just going to show you this. It is a nice pump. Like it's, I got the travel mini. That's something that I love about the brand, by the way. They do a lot of mini size products, so you can try them first and you don't have to commit to buying a full size, so that it makes it a little easier to try out products. 
So this is that primer, and as you can see, it's sort of like a lotion-y kind of thing. And I do really like that when it comes to primers. So I think I can like this. It doesn't really have a strong scent or anything, that's something that I always look for as well. And I think that this is just a primer that I can get down with, but that doesn't wow me. Like, for me, with <laughs> primers, I tend to not love high-end primers because they're just not really worth it. I mean, my foundation is going to cover it, and I just need it to be, you know, a good base layer, and I find that very often, affordable brands like Essence and Catrice also do pretty good primers that I sometimes like even better <laughs> than their more expensive counterparts. Yeah, so this I like, but I would have to use up the entire bottle before I really can give you my full thoughts. It feels pleasant on the skin, it is hydrating, that's for sure, but in terms of how long it makes my makeup last, I wouldn't be able to tell you because this is literally like the second time I've used it. Now that we're all primed and ready to go, I'm going to talk to you about some foundation. And I've got two Fenty Beauty foundations. I have the Pro Filter Hydrating Longwear Foundation in shade 120. And I have their Fenty Ease Drop Skin Tint in shade 1. And both of these aren't perfect. <laughs> so let me start by reviewing these products for you first. My main issue with the foundation is that it's a great, great shade match for me, I have to say, but this does not last on my skin. And the reason why it doesn't last on my skin isn't because it breaks apart or wears off, but because it transfers. It is a really lovely hydrating formula, but it doesn't like stay on your face so whenever you touch it whenever anything touches your face there's going to be product that transfers it and i remember when i tried this it was the winter time and i have worn a scarf to you know make sure i kept nice and toasty on my bike ride and the scarf was covered in foundation afterwards so for me this this is one that i can wear but i have to be very careful with it and actually i kept this around in my most recent declutter because i was like oh that's a fenty foundation and i knew i wanted to do a full face of fenty sometime this year so i was like oh i'll keep it around and maybe declutter it later but since then they've come out with this new skin tint and since i love sheer coverage foundations i was like yep i'm gonna try this I think I'm gonna love it, and I actually think I got the wrong shade. However, I bought this shade because the website recommended that if in the Pro Filter you were shade 120, which is the shade I have, that shade 1 would be your match. So I'm not sure if shade 2 or shade up would be better for me. I'm not entirely sure. Um, but yeah, so for me, this I like better in terms of wear time. It is more mattifying than what I would personally want to go for. It's not hydrating enough, even though it does sort of say in the claims that it's supposed to be a little bit hydrating, but this is definitely more hydrating. So it really depends on what you, what you want. And as you can see, like this is just a little bit darker than this. So I don't think that their shade matching system was entirely right. Maybe the shade 120 in their matte foundation is a match to this? I don't know. But that's what I remember reading and that's why I went for this one. But I think shade 2 might have been better. Since I like this one better in terms of the texture, I will be using this. Because I also want to show you the two different ways that you can apply this. I personally still prefer a sponge with this. However, the brand, let me see if I can find it, recommends a foundation brush. And I'm going to be using the Zoeva 104 buffer brush on this side of my face and the sponge on this side of my face so you can see the difference between the different ap application methods and the reason why I still prefer the sponge is because it's just a little quicker and I feel that with a sponge uh, with a brush I do get more coverage that's for sure um, but I I want the sheer coverage <laughs> like that's what I want so it just gives me with the sponge I get the effect that I want, and then you can also see how light this is. I mean, we're gonna go in with bronzer and all that later as well, so it's gonna look okay. I feel that I can make this shade work for me, especially because I'm very light in my neck, so it's, but it's just going to look a little bit crazy 
because I kind of have my summer color at the moment as well. I think that in the dead of winter, this might work better for me, but I think this, this is not hydrating enough for me for the dead of winter. So there's that as well to take into account. But yeah, this is a lovely product. I really like it, but it's not my favorite skin tint, that's for sure. So this is definitely one I want to revisit at some time, uh, at some point, because I'm currently testing out loads of different foundations that I bought in the past year uh, to make sure that I can give a nice little roundup by the end of the year of all these different foundations. So this is what happens when you apply it with a brush. And the thing that I never love about applying foundation with a brush is that it just gets a little streaky. And this is what happens with a sponge. And I feel that this is still, you know, a little bit more natural than the other side. So for me, this whole sponge situation is much better. I don't mind it if my natural redness still comes through. That's actually what I want. <laughs> so for me, it's a bit more perfect with sponge. And I feel that with the brush side, do you just see the difference? It's just a little more mattifying even. And I like to actually go in with a sponge. <laughs> if I use a brush anyways, just to make sure that it's a little bit more even because I feel it doesn't look that great, so then you take away some of that coverage again. So if you want coverage, I don't think this is the product, but for a skin tint, I find that it has pretty good coverage, I have to say. For concealer, another product that I haven't used a lot yet because I haven't really roped it into any sort of like reviewing cycle yet, uh, but it's the Bright Fix Eye Brightener in the shade Seashell, which is uh, shade 03. And I remember when I tried this, I was like, ooh, this is really nice, but it doesn't really give a lot of coverage. So this is the kind of product that if I were to really put it in rotation, I would probably opt for adding a corrector of some kind to sort of go with this in tandem because I feel it doesn't have the most coverage. And with this, I actually want to use a brush with it to apply it. I've actually been doing some like really quick, easy makeup the past couple of days because I have been, I've been so busy. And I've really rediscovered applying concealer with a brush, um, not because it gives me great coverage, but because it's just uh, much better, like a much quicker way of applying anything. So let me just show you on this side what happens. So I feel this has just enough coverage for me, but this is so emollient that you do have to be a little bit careful with it. And then on the other side, I'll, I'll use a sponge, just so you can see both sides, <laughs> both application techniques. And I feel again, with the brush, you get a little bit more coverage, but with the sponge, it's just a little quicker and more seamless, I find. Um, but I find that on this side, again, it looks a little bit more natural, a bit more seamless. So I would always up for the sponge, I guess. Um, but I do really like it with a brush as well because it has a bit more hydration. And even though this is like an under eye, like brightener thing, I didn't go for a super light shade uh, because I just like these very hydrating concealers all over, <laughs> really. Oh, and by the way, I did squirt this out on the back of my hand first because it does have this like ball-like applicator, but I just don't like things when it gets really messy. So I would always just opt for putting some of it on the back of my hand and then going from there. I just think that would be easier. Now, before we go into powder, we do have to talk about another product because I did also buy the Fenty Cream Bronzer. This is the Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Bronzer. And I bought this in the shade 01 Amber. I probably should have gone for one shade up because Amber is very cool toned and I kind of knew this going into it because I was like, I don't have a lot of like contouring shades and if I were to contour, I would probably go for something like this. And um, this is just, this is a lovely, lovely product. I do have to say though that I think I like the powder bronzer just a little bit more because it's easier to use for me. Um, but the way I like to apply this is to just go in with 
fingers and just sort of place it. Already using your finger a little bit to blend it in. And you can see how gray tone this is, which is great for my skin because I've got a cool undertone. So for me, this is not too ashy. And then I just use this e.l.f. small stipple brush just to blend it in. And you can just see that that gives a really nice contour here. So I would not use this all over. Uh, but for a contour, I think it's really, really nice. I think that if I were to use this as a bronzer shade, I should have gone for shade 02, I believe, which is a bit more warm toned. And this blends super easily, but without blending it away and all that jazz. So I really, really like that. I do have another cream product in a minute, <laughs> um, but I do think that I can just layer that over powder. That's no problem. Um, so we are going to be powdering the face and I bought one of these mini loose powders from Fenty, but this got so messy um, because it's very difficult to get the product out. So this, the little sponge it comes with is currently keeping all the product in its place. This is in a shade, oh, what was the shade again? Butter? Yes. This is in a shade butter. And I really like that they actually do this in a mini because I'm not someone who is likely to like use up a ton of um, loose powder because it's really difficult so I, I'm glad this comes in a travel size and a lot of the other powders that Fenty does are just incredibly mattifying so for me this was like the only option and they do this in a shade that is a little bit more like lavendery pink as well that was the one that I initially wanted to try but they were out of the mini so I decided to go with this shade because this is the the next shade that sort of caters to light and fair skin tones. I really like this powder, I have to say. Again, I've only used it once or twice. And with powders, usually when they are too drying on me, I can see it instantly. And with this, I feel that never happens. So I think that this is a nice powder, that's for sure. So for bronzer, I do also have one of the Fenty Powder Bronzers, and these are the Sun Stalker Instant Warmth Bronzers. And in this light, a shade called In The Sun, you do get a really good cool tone bronzer or neutrally toned bronzer, I should say, that is very, fair enough, doesn't look money out of skin, and this is one of my favorite bronzers. You can tell the FB pattern that this used to have is completely gone. I really, really like this, and that's why I wanted to try some more Fenty, like also cream products and stuff, because I was like, I just, I just really like Fenty. So I just like to use this all the way around the perimeter of my face. And then you can also see it, it just brings everything together. So even though that foundation shade was perhaps a little bit too fair, um, because I'm sort of bringing some color back into my face, it works just well enough. Like it doesn't look as dead and stark anymore as it did just a little bit ago. So, and this is again, super easy to use. It blends perfectly. The shade is just perfect for me. And then we have two highlighters and I think I'm just gonna whack on both just for funsies. I have one of the Kilowatt highlighters in Lightning Dust and Fire Crystal. I have used this enough. It's a baby, baby, baby hairpin pan, but I've hit pan on this. You know I love it. And then the Diamond Balm. This is the Diamond Balm All Over Diamond Veil How Many Carrots. It was surprisingly nice, I have to say. I wasn't sure what to do with this because it has a bit of sparkle running through it. And then you're going like, oh, I don't want glitter on my cheeks. But this is so pretty. I would recommend using this with a sponge though. Fingers or a sponge is the best way to do, to do it. With a brush, I feel it just doesn't pick up as well. Um, but I'm going to be going in with a lightning dust. No, this is fire crystal. First, I don't really like this more subtle side. I don't love that, but I do really like this more intense side. I wish Fenty would come out with that shade, but like, you know, a full pan, like just that shade, because I would not repurchase this because I know I won't use the other shade because I just don't really like the effect it gives, but this, that's what Fire Crystal looks like on me. And I'm gonna top it off, just for funsies, with my fingers, like this, just a little bit. 
on the very, very end here of my cheekbones, just to add a little bit extra. I don't have to go anywhere anymore today, so it doesn't matter how sparkly I look. And then, last but not least, a product I really wanted to try. This is very high on my wish list, which is, it's kind of made me want to do the video. And that is their uh, Cheeks Out Freestyle Cream Blush. And I bought the shade 05 Strawberry Drip. How fun is this for summer? I love these really vibrant, corally pinks. This is a cream blush. And just for reference, this is a mini diamond bomb and that's how big the cream blush is. This is the compact for the cream bronzer. So if you buy this and you're expecting to get a bigger compact, um, you may be disappointed. Um, but for me, I knew that this came in a smaller packaging. I wish the cream blush would come in the same sort of size as the cream bron bronzer though. Look at how fun and bright that is. I love it. And this is how I like to apply cream blush, but I need to sort of do both fingers at the same time, else I can't do this. <laughs> and as you can see, just a really pretty flushed kind of look, really, really nice, just a little bit of something bright and poppy to make your cheeks come alive just a little bit more. So I do really like this like sort of cheek look. It goes really well with my complexion. And that's of course something that Fenty is very much known for. <sighs> they simply do <laughs> the biggest shade ranges for pretty much anything. They do some really crazy lipstick shades as well. They do a ton of cream uh, blush shades and their products are really good and high quality. I've double primed my lid so you know what time it is. It is time for eyeshadow. And I just have two of the snap ch the shadows. Of course, they're also doing um, uh, a, a larger palette now that comes with like a face palette. I'm not sure, but that looks like every single eyeshadow palette I already have. These probably do too, to some people who know what I have in my collection, but they do some cool toned eyeshadow palettes, so you knew I was gonna try those. So I bought shade number two, which is the snap shadow in two cool neutrals. And this looked really pretty to me. It's got like mauve purples. I know from uh, some people already talking about this that this purple isn't the most vibrant purple ever on the planet, but I think it's still very workable. And then I also got the uh, number six in Smoky. And this is a little bit more taupey and again, a little bit of a purple vibe to it. So I thought don't these just look like they could be very good together if you want to make this deeper or if you want to make this a bit more every day so and since these snap together i thought they could just be a nice sort of palette so what i'm going to do is i'm going to zoom you in and i'm going to do an eye look for you and then after we're done we're going to talk about what i actually did i'm going to try and use two at least two shades from each one of these Alright, so that will be the eye look, eye look done and this has me really surprised because I've heard so many people talking pretty negatively about these snap shadows and I quite like them. Granted, I haven't used every single shade yet, which is also what I always aim to do with my shadows so that I have a real feel for the palette. But from the cool neutrals, I ended up putting this one in the crease. Uh, this one is all over the lid and then this purpley shade is a little bit on the lower lash line. And uh, the crease shade was really nice. It's like a really nice, like, mauvey, plummy, purpley kind of shade. And I really liked it as a blend shade as well. This is surprisingly brightening. I thought it would have a bit more color. 
Um, it's perhaps not as vibrant of a shimmer as a very full-on metallic. It's more of like a satin leaning shade, but I think it looks really pretty on the eye and it looks really, really good with these shades. And my prediction that these two palettes would go together also came true because I ended up using this like darker brownish taupe shade to smoke things out along the outer V and into the crease. And then I also used this shade on the lower lash line and it looks like a very interesting like sparkly kind of shade and it did give me a little bit of fallout I have to say. Uh, so it's not the best perhaps but it's got like a purpley undertone and then a little bit of sparkle sparkle like uh, sparkle running through it and i actually see the sparkle on my lids it actually translates granted i didn't use it on the lower lash line so i tend to use a denser brush there but i i quite like this and it pairs really well with the purple from the other palette so um i i I have to say I like it so far. And then just for fun, uh, because I felt the, the palettes didn't really have a good inner corner highlight shade, I went in with Lightning Dust in the inner corner as uh, so the m softer highlight as a bit of an inner corner moment. And then what I also did for you is apply mascara. I have a tester of the Full Frontal Volume Lift and Curl Mascara and this is not my favorite. <laughs> I never really love high-end mascara, it seems. Um, but this wand, it's flat on one side and then wider if you turn it this way. No, no can do. I don't know why. It's 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 got this weird curve, so I feel I can't really touch all of my lashes with it. So that's a bit of a shame. So that's why this one wasn't perfect. I got a tester though, so it's fine. I can try it. So I'll use it up. Like, but this will probably be gone in like a couple of tries because it felt quite dry already. Maybe because it's a mini. I'm never too sure with minis how long they last. So that's a bit of a shame. But yeah, I will, I will try it for sure and then we'll see. So I'm going to be applying some setting spray right now and then we're going to talk lips. And for lips, I've got a couple of options for you. So I've got two of the gloss bombs and I've got a mini lipstick for you. Um, since the look is, uh, it does have a bit of purple and it's quite cool toned, I don't think the lipstick will necessarily go. This is the Mademoiselle uh, Lipstick in Flamingo Acid and it's a mini that I got in a Sephora lip kit. So it's just a tiny bit of product and it is a really stunning shade but I don't really think it will go. I mean this is what the shade looks like. It's like, out of the entire lineup of these lipsticks, I feel this is one of the better ones. It's like a really bright berry shade, but it still has a bit of plum running through it as well. It's one of those shades that I would dub like a good bright for the fall time. You know what I mean? So, this is a good one. But to be quite fair, my favorite lip products from Fenty, the gloss bombs. I have a regular gloss bomb. This is in the shade Fussy. And this, I feel, is more of like a uh, toppery kind of shade. I mean, I this doesn't really do much for just my lips, I feel. I kind of like this to top, like, over nude lipstick. So my favorite of the two is actually the Gloss Balm Cream. And this is in the shade Mauve Wives. And this is just a My Lips But Better kind of gloss. This does something for my lips. I feel it looks fuller, it feels more hydrated, and it just really goes well with my lip color. Whereas this, it doesn't have enough base pigment to really make any difference. It just adds a bit of sparkle, which I like, which I like, but I just want a little bit more for my gloss. And I feel that this shade is just the best one. So let me put this one on. Now with these gloss bombs, you have to know that these do have a significant scent. It's a bit of a cough syrup, sweet kind of scent. I don't mind it. It dissipates quite quickly. I don't get a headache from it. It doesn't linger the entire day. But if you're sensitive for, to fragrance, you may not like it. So that's what this one looks like. Let me swatch Fussy on the back of my hand so you can see the difference. Uh, so this is like a really light sheer pink with a lot of like sparkle running through it. It's pretty, but it just, my, my lips are naturally quite pigmented, so I feel it doesn't do enough. And then I'll put the cream next to it. And then you just see, like, this is what I want from a gloss. 
I do want it to have a bit of color. So yeah, those are all of the products that I had for you. Those are the things I want to share with you. The Gloss Balm is one of my favorites. I love all of these cheek products. Like, if you buy one single Fenty thing, make it a cheek product. Because that's where they truly shine. Like, this cheek combo. It's life. <laughs> it's life. Um, I also quite like the complexion products, I'm not going to lie. But they're not my favorites. Like, they're... they're very usable products that I can definitely use up. I don't have to like throw these away or declutter them. I think I can get through these and use them up at some point for sure. Um, but I don't think the skin tint is necessarily my favorite in terms of like sheer coverage foundations. I have others that I like better. Um, and uh, But I'm still trying out a lot as I was saying so I can't tell yet which one is my actual favorite. But of what I've tried I think that this... I mean it looks okay. I mean it goes pretty well like now that I have everything on even though this lighting is making me look a little paler than I am I think um, but yeah I think that if I had a better shade in that I think I might have liked it a bit more not gonna lie but I like the texture I like the way it wears um, and I do really like the other products as well but for me Fenty cheek products that's where it's at so yeah, thank you very much for watching today's video. I hope you really enjoyed it. Please give it a thumbs up if you liked it. Leave a comment down below with your favorite Fenty product because I would love to know. Thank you very much for watching. Subscribe to my channel if you'd like to see more by me. I make three new videos a week. And then I hope to see you in my next video. Bye, everybody.